presence. <coughs> Fade in. Interior Edgar's house, laboratory day. Kristen is now strapped into the device. Apparatus has been lowered onto her head. Now, we'll begin the examination, uh, the exam, Kristen. Your brain may begin to process some images as we conduct the uh, psychological part of the exam. Just let them flow freely. Edgar waves his hands to Dr. Emerson, Jake, and Alicia to get their attention. He then points to the monitor and mouths the words, watch. They all divert their attention to the monitor. Edgar places his hand over a large button on the now limb, takes a deep breath, and then presses the button. Kristen's body tightens up. Oh! Please just relax and let things flow, Kristen. Her body becomes relaxed again. Monitor. Static appears on the screen. Back to laboratory. Edgar rubs his hands together in anticipation. Several seconds pass with no change on the screen. Come on. Come on. Alicia takes hold of Jake's arm. Monitor. Images begin to appear on the screen. As they become more clear, it looks like a view from inside a bubble with membranes around it. Fluid is moving all around. Back to laboratory. What is that? He steps closer to the monitor and rubs his hands together more briskly. Monitor. Slowly the images begin to dissipate, and then the screen changes back to static. Back to laboratory. What? Nothing more? Dr. Emerson puts his hand on Edgar's shoulder to comfort him. Edgar looks at him and then faces downward, shaking his head. No. Sir, shall we remove her from the apparatus? Without looking up, Edgar nods his head. He begrudgingly makes his way to the keyboard and enters some data. The head apparatus slowly raises up. Whoa, what was I looking at? It was just a psychological exam. How did I do? Everything checked out fine. You're in perfect health. She removes the restraints from Kristen, who slowly stands up a little unstable. Alexine takes her by the arm. Let's get you home. I have an envelope for you upstairs, and we'll call you a cab. As they walk toward the door of the lab, Kristen slows down and turns around to acknowledge the others. Goodbye, y'all. Edgar does not move, but the others wave to her. Alexine and Kristen exit the room. I don't understand. Sir, it's about dinner time. Let us consume some food and digest just what transpired. I am certain there's an answer. This is why you brought us here, correct? For intellectual collaboration? Yes, this is good timing. We have time to clean up, and I've made 7.30 reservations at O'Neill's. Edgar lifts up his head and forces a smile. Yes, good plan. Interior O'Neill's restaurant tonight. The five of them are sitting around a circular table with drinks in front of them, awaiting their food. I just don't understand. I've tested and tested it, and it should have worked. The food is now delivered to the table. They begin to eat. Is it possible it just won't work on all subjects? All beings have consciousness, and the process by which it is filtered via the denalum is sound. I've conducted years of research and performed a multitude of tests. It should engage the information for all humans with no exception. A few moments pass. Dr. Graves. In your book, you wrote an entire chapter on susceptibility. If I recall correctly, you speculate that the discovery of past lives for each individual could be vastly different based on how many lives were actually lived. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. I also found it to be fascinating to learn that in this life, there are those that may hold deeper wis wisdom than others. You wrote that this could be a result of experiences from multiple past lives. That would be in contrast to those who, well, live on a more simple plane. They would have only lived a few past lives. Edgar sits up straight. Yes? Well, in the case of Kristen, how, sh how shall I say, it, it would appear from my observations that she currently lives in quite a simpler plane. Yes, yes, Alicia. I believe I understand where you are going with this, if I may. Alicia smiles and nods. Edgar. Let's discuss what we saw on the monitor. Mostly static. Then I recall fluid surrounding a sphere. It was like we were looking outward from the inside of the sphere. And there were squiggly lines on the surface. And I want to say that they looked like membranes. Forgive me, uh, I'm not following. I think what we were looking at was the 
insides of her mother's womb. Anger looks taken aback, and then his lies laid up. Oh my. And perhaps that's the only pass prior to birth for Kristen to become, uh, because she is, well, um, uh, I'll say it, brand new. They all laugh profusely for a couple of minutes. As the laughing dies down, Edgar takes out a handkerchief and wipes below his eyes from tears of laughter. Oh my. I knew it was the right decision bringing you all into this. Alicia, brilliant observation. It all came from your book, sir. Jake takes Alicia's hand under the table. She smiles at him. Dr. Emerson and Alexine's eyes lock. But this time, she's the one that diverts her eyes. Waiter, another bottle of wine, please. 